didn't mean it when I said I give up. I couldn't leave you. You know I'm trying to be what you. Okay. Don't do too well when you ain't close by. I know that that's wrong, but I don't mind. So keep. Good morning. I'm in Manila, and uh, today's the day of the Club Cleo uh, mean greet. Uh, and it's their first anniversary here in the Philippines, so yay. They invited me to the Philippines, and they got me this beautiful hotel. Uh, beautiful, This, this, the bed I've, I already slept in. Now, for those of you that can't come or could not come to the event, um, I'm gonna be doing, because I'm doing like a live demo on stage, but I don't want to go on stage like without makeup, so I'm gonna do my whole face first, and then just what I have to do today, just, I'll just wash my face there or cleanse my face. So I will show you the look that I'm gonna be wearing on stage. Pretty much be walking you through the same things that I'm probably gonna be saying during the live demo. So uh, I think I'm probably gonna have to use all Clio products um, when I'm doing the live demo. So th today it's not all Clio, but uh, they have some new products that I wanted to show you. Some of them, but um, starting off, I'm gonna use this makeup face, um, Uzi makeup face, their lip volumizing thing. In my video with the, oh shit, in my video with the toners, some a lot of people were asking what I had on my lips. I had the Pony Effect Favorite Fluid Lip Tint, like a thin layer of that, and then I put a little bit of this on top of it to make it look glossy. And then I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna start off with primer. This is the Clio Pre-Step Egg Pore Primer. Really similar to the, oh my, please. Oh, okay. Really similar to the Benefit Professional because it has a bit of like uh, color to it. Not that, I, I don't think it makes that much of a difference to be honest, but use too much because I feel like it will just work against your foundation. It will make the foundation slip and slide everywhere. So just the bare minimum, only in the areas that you actually have pores. And kind of swipe along in this direction. You don't want to do too much of this because it can start to pill the uh, primer. And sweeping it along one direction helps it uh, helps you push it into the skin, kind of get the primer into the pores where it's meant to be. Clio has a new cushion. Clio comes out with so many base products, and they just came out with a new collection too. This is part of their nudism line. Um, the original nudism, I didn't really like, but I know it was super, super popular in Korea. Um, this is the velvet wear version, and so it's supposed to be a matte version. Perfect for the Philippines, because we're really humid. Like, bitch, I, I stepped off that plane and also the humidity hits me in the face. And so, foundations like this that um, I think would work better in humid environments, because if you have dry skin or if you live in a dry environment, I think things like this would work against you. Um, now, the coverage on this is really extreme and not just that but it dries really really quickly so I mean you can use it with the, the puff um, you can get really great coverage out of this but I want to keep even though you know I like full coverage I want to keep it as thin as possible because with liquid foundation you know, guys know I just use a flat foundation brush to put a thin layer and then I uh, buff it in with a or I blend it in with a sponge um, with a cushion I like to take brushes like this you can take a kabuki brush you can take you know those big like toothbrush looking makeup brushes and you can kind of dip it in there just a little bit it's not like a flat foundation brush where it's just like this thin flat brush that soaks up a little bit probably this is almost like a sponge and then what I do is I'm working sections because it will dry really quickly just like with a foundation brush apply it in long sweep motions and then pat it in And also, the sweeping will help push it into the pores and make it more, uh, adhere better to the skin. Clio came out with new concealers as well, uh, or updated their one of their top concealers. So with this, you can build this up to full coverage, but I'm going to be using concealer anyway, so I don't, I only want a thin layer of this everywhere to even out my skin tone. Now this is how I like to apply my cushion foundation lately. Of course, if you're outside, you can just use the puff in there. Uh, you don't have to like take a brush with you. But for me, this just ensures the thinnest application. Let's take a look. 
Tell me. There are kind of two ways that I like to brighten up my face if I'm going for that look. Either one, I use a foundation that's exactly my skin tone and then use a concealer in the center to brighten up, it's lighter. Or if I'm gonna use a foundation that is a little bit lighter than my natural skin tone, I do have to make sure I take it down my neck. And you know, me having such a long neck, it's like taking up 50% of the screen. I need to do that. Right, so I told you earlier that they renewed their a really popular concealer, the original Kill Cover Liquid Concealer. Um, main difference physically is that the, t the cap is longer. And also the applicator is more like this. And the pigment in this is no joke. It's really, really full coverage, but it's really, really thin. And when you're blending, it doesn't like disappear and turn all watery. Kind of like a flat foundation brush. I'm gonna take a flat concealer brush. Constantly, this is uh, for Picasso. I'm gonna take it on here. And again, you can just swipe the concealer directly onto your skin. In general, if you apply your foundation well and you apply it really thinly, that should be no problem. And if you notice, I didn't take the concealer all the way to the ed uh, edge of my eye. I find that when you're blending it, it's gonna go up there anyway. If you put concealer all the way up to here when you first apply, I feel like there's just so much concealer at the edge of your eye and especially if you wear eyeshadow under there, it just starts to get really thick under the eye. And for me, because my under eye moves so much, it can get really cakey there. If I don't feel like using that brush, instead of swiping, I prefer to just kind of like dot. The sponge I'm using is their Hydro Sponge. I swear to God, no one was using this like a few months ago. In fact, you would get a lot of them with, as like service, like for free, when you went shopping at the store. But all of a sudden, now that all the YouTubers are using it, Pony was using it, it was like sold out for weeks. I couldn't get it for weeks at the stores. And when they finally got it in stock, I, girl, I bought all of them. I bought all of them. Oh, and also, I forgot to say, the renewal in terms of the actual concealer itself. More coverage, which I didn't think was possible, but they did it. I try not to take this like all the way back, especially if, it's, if I'm using a concealer that's lighter than the foundation. I just feel like if it's so bright all the way up to here, it kind of looks unnatural. But again, you can do your makeup however you want. I do take it up a little, just a little bit. This foundation, this concealer isn't too far off. It's actually almost exactly the same color as the foundation itself. So don't um, mind too much. And I do have a little bit of extra redness here. If you are using a concealer that is a uh, shade or maybe a shade and a half lighter than your foundation, then I recommend kind of just keep it more in the center. I feel like that just creates the, the most realistic illusion. I've been sick for the past like week and a half and my nose keeps running and I keep coughing and it's, it's all right. Now for powder, I'm gonna use the Clio Kill Cover Airwear Skin Smoother Powder. Um, if you like, oh Lord. If you like the Makeup Forever HD Press Powder, really pop in Korea. I feel like it's a great alternative. Differences though, um, it's not as white casty, I feel like, and the powder isn't as, what's the word? There's not as much um, powder kick up. It doesn't look as powdery on the skin. In fact, this uh, cushion, this concealer, and this powder combination, uh, Hour and Friday, we're like, what did you do to your skin? It looks so much better. And I was like, I don't know. I just used this certain, this foundation concealer powder. And they're like, oh my God, you should just start using that forever. I was just like, great, thanks. It comes with a brush. I think that's better for like dry skin. I don't really like the brush that's in there. Um, but if you have a powder brush, I think it's better for dry skin to at least set the makeup without over drying your skin. I have oily skin and if you live in a humid place like the Philippines um, and you wanna really set your makeup, I really recommend using, it. this is the one from the face shop, um, oil pack. I really recommend puffs. Dip in there, tap off the excess and really push it into the foundation to set it. Forget it. You can also your eyebrows so that the eyebrow pencil glides on better. Um, I don't remember, did I just do my eyes? Try to avoid your eyes. Just kind of rub off excess foundation from your eyes because um, eyeshadow doesn't actually glide that well. Well, it glides well, but the pigment isn't really there when you have, when you put eyeshadow onto an eyelid that's been set with powder. Ooh. 
Moving on to eyebrows. The, oh lord, the kill brow, auto hard brow pencil. They can describe it as like a sword shape. Just like a flat kind of uh, brow pencil. I've been using this like every day since I got it. I just, cause I don't know, I've just been doing my brows kind of just like really quick. And I think with that slanted shape, cause I like shapes like this or either this or really, really small, tiny points. The small, tiny points because I can get like a really detailed uh, brow look. But this one just makes it really quick and easy because I'm kind of just like drawing quick strokes. Get through with the spoolie. The front, I kind of take it flat and swipe down and then brush it out to blend it. This, I'm gonna have to kind of draw underneath a lot. Like really take my down here because uh, my brows are not even. Not just that, but there's also like a cut to my brow, so. Great. I did it on purpose though, so that's my fault. Okay, awesome possum. I kind of like the way that looks just like that without putting my brow mascara, so I'll leave it like that for now. But later, if I change my mind, then I'll put on brow mascara. Uh, now I'm gonna contour my nose. What I've been doing lately is kind of contour in three steps with kind of three different shades. The first one will be the lightest shade. Then I take a slightly darker powder and apply it on the areas where I want a little bit more fine, so like the tip of my nose. Right here. Still kind of not too precise. It's just slightly more defined than the last. Like that. And actually, I can probably just stop there. And I didn't even bring the third. There's a third powder that I usually contour with, but um, I can just layer on this darker one right here. And then what I re like to do to really make sure that pops is I take a powder foundation and I use this to kind of highlight kind of and redefine certain areas. So under my nose and then around the nostril right here. And I also take it on the side of the nose connecting onto my cheek because that really creates the illusion that the cheek continues to go up to here. And then also if there's any more dark circle that hasn't been covered, it helps a little bit to cover it here with the powder foundation. So it all kind of just connects here. And also if you have a line like me, I got fillers there, so it helps a little bit, but if you have that kind of like dark shadow here, which can really age your face, um, I recommend putting powder foundation there if you happen to have powder foundation. So I'm gonna set it to redefine. All right, and then the final step for contouring the nose is definitely the highlighter. You don't have to, do you have to do this? I don't think you have to do this. And Studio House came out with like a bunch of new palettes and I they were calling out to me. So this is the Knit Closet one. I also have the Leopard one. Uh, but I like the way this looks. Looks like it'd be really good for like a natural look as, which obviously I'm into, kind of. Natural, this nose, this brown nose, oh lord. When I pulled this out of my luggage, I found that one of the shadows was like popped out, which was so saddening. Oh, okay. <laughs> that should work again. I'm gonna take this shade, um, Cashmere, and use it as a base. So I didn't set my lids, obviously, like I said, but I did that on purpose because I just find the first base shadow is so much more pigmented when you don't set your eyelids with powder. Uh, <laughs> obviously not this one. This is my first time using this palette and I actually don't like this palette at all. Um, I've been continuously using it, but the only thing I really like about it is the blush in there. The eyeshadows are kind of shit. The other pants actually, like nearly all of them popped out uh, and I had to glue the shit back in. So I really don't recommend this palette. Um, the pigment is almost non-existent. In fact, you can just use this first base shadow as the setting powder for your eyelids. But if you do need to do that, go right ahead. Now there are a mix of warm and cool tone shadows, like cool tones like this. I'm not really a cool tone person anymore, really. Um, I tend to go for more warm shades, so I'm gonna use uh, like a mix of these two on the outer corner right here. This isn't really anything crazy, obviously. I'm not a 
We all know I'm not a fucking makeup artist. <laughs> Um, this is just like my daily makeup. No matter what colors I'm using, this is what I tend to do. That's this kind of shadow on the outer corner. Actually, maybe I will take a little bit of this brown here and I'll mix that with the more orangey brown. I want that color to be a little bit more deeper. And then I'm gonna take an eyeliner and I'm just gonna line my eyelids. I bought this brush recently. This is from Mustav, Mustaiv. It's so useful. Because it's such a straight edge that it makes eyelining so quick and easy for me. Especially for the shape of eyeliner that I do. Which is just extending my natural eye shape. Place it so it's connected to my natural eye shape. And I literally just place the brush down. And I draw a line. It's number E75, the flat liner. I kind of blend <laughs> the eyeliner on my fingernail because then I can just wipe it off easily with a tissue. This is another eyeliner brush, but it's more of a, a natural hair brush. And I'm going to take that dark brown that I was using earlier, this one. And I use that to kind of blend out that eyeliner because I don't want it to be too, too harsh. Ideally, you'll do this when it's still a little bit, I mean, it hasn't dried 100%. But I was talking, so I'm also kind of took it on the inner corner to make my eyeshade look a little bit longer. So what I've been doing lately is I take a red-ish eyeshadow. Is that even red on camera? Looks a lot more cool tone on camera. But I take it on a small brush like this, like a little baby pencil brush. And what I do is from the end of my eyeliner to the to this like this part of my eye, I place it there and it kind of makes the eye, gives the eyes a kind of almost like swollen look, which I like. I don't know. I just feel like it helps create that illusion of like a longer eye shape. Relax. <coughs> uh, I don't think I'm putting mascara on. I think I'm fine with how much my eyes are defined now. If you want to put mascara, go ahead, go right ahead. Um, now I'm going to use the blush that's in here. I guess I'll use the bottom one, this kind of mauvey blush right here. That's the shade Angora Pink. Whatever that means. Kind of place it right here. You just put the blush there. If you want to put it on your nose, just touch your nose. Don't put it too much or else your nose will look dirty. Especially since I already have nose contour there. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of that orange blush, the one on the top above it in the closet. Oh, take a little bit of that and I'll put that on the nose and kind of right here to help connect it. Okay, beautiful. And last but not least is my lips. Um, Cleo has some new lipsticks. They always got new shit. Oh my, please, I mean, it'd be nice to focus so they can see it. Rouge Heel Velvets, uh, Rouge Heel Lipsticks. I actually had, but I never really talked about my channel. They're so freaking pigmented and creamy. It's insane. Like one touch on the lips and it's like full pigment. I can't even believe it. So this is like the velvet version. Gorgeous. Love it. Do you see how big like this lipstick, like the application part is? It's gigantic. So it makes like I, all I have to do is and I'm like done. Application wise, for the way I put it, it's a little, it's not difficult. It's just that I tend to just like tap my lipstick on, but this is a matte formula. So I kind of have to swipe on there. Great if you put on full lips, but not for me. So, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I just have to finesse it. And the other thing is, the colors of these are like, they're not, I have no complaints about the colors. They're really nice. It's just that they're not colors I would wear because you know me, I prefer more natural colors. Not that these are unnatural, it's just that they're really strong reds, really strong brick colors. This one is a gorgeous color. It's just really dark for my preferences. But do you, oh. My God. Dear Lord.
see my cuts I got from shaving. This one is Coral Avenue. I'm using this as a base. I'm not putting this full on. This is not how it looks out, like full on. And then I'm going to use Rose Breeze on the center. This alone though looks so freaking pretty. Oh, it looks fucking huge. Thank you, Cleo, team, 